evening. It is Wednesday, November 16th, 9 a.m. I'm gonna go pick up my car and then we are going to Philadelphia today. Um, Dan has been working on a musical called Found at the Philadelphia Theater Company for the last few weeks and tonight is the press opening. So uh, we're gonna do some fun things in Philly. Um, we're going to eat some cheese steaks and then I'm gonna go see the show and then go to the premiere party after that. It's gonna be fun. Made it to Philly. City Hall right in front of us there. Hard to see because it's cloudy today. There it is. Hello. <clears throat> Look really close. William Penn's on top of the building there. Hooray! We made it to Philly! And this is my friend Mark. I don't know, there he is. And we're gonna go get some cheesesteaks. So we're um, on the corner of Pat Young and Wharton, um, and we're right by both Pat's and, and Gino's. So we're gonna get one of each and see how they stack up. I've only gone to one or the other. Now we're gonna do both of them at the same time. And I'm gonna settle the debate once and for all. Me, Chrissy, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna tell you which one is better. Here we go. Pat's is located on the south side of the cheesesteak corner. Their founder, Pat Olivieri, is generally credited to inventing the cheesesteak sandwich. These guys opened in 1933, and as you can see, their style here is a simple and understated. And on the other side of the corner, you have Gino's. They're the newcomers here at the Cheesesteak Corner, opening in 1966. As you can see, they're a lot flashier than Pat's. I actually suggest visiting this place at night because all the neon is lit up just like Vegas. Alright, so here are the cheesesteaks here. This one is the Pat's Cheesesteak, and as you can see, this one has like chopped, chopped beef. And then, this is the Gino's over here. You can see it's like whole slices of beef. I don't want to like put my fingers all over it. This side will be mine. But it still has like big slices of meat there. There's even a big difference between the fries. So these are the Pat's fries and they have like a crunchy coating on them. And then the Gino's fries. Those ones are shoestrings. So there we go. It's the difference as we can tell so far. So I'm gonna try the pass first. So this is like the cross section here. Little pieces of beef, cheese whiz, onions. Let's see. Mmm, mm. that's really good. That is really tasty. Sorry, I'm styling this a little. <laughs> I need a different brand, baby. Mm. Alright, so this is delicious. Yeah. This is Gino's. I haven't done Pat's yet. You done the Gino's? Alright, so this is pretty good. I find the quality of the beef is really high. And then we'll accompany it with a fry. What did you do first? Good Pat. Okay. And now I'm going to try the Gino's. And I feel like, I feel like there's a difference between the amount of beef that's in each of these sandwiches. I don't know if it's because they chop off the beef at Pat's, so it kind of like takes up more room. At Gino's they use long slices, so it kind of looks like there's less. So I'm not sure if that's true, but let's try it. That's really good too. It's gonna be really hard. Yeah, I think I have my answer for both. Okay, let me try fry. Can I, I don't want to eat ranch wrap again. No, you're fine. I know my fry answer. Mm. I'm still, sure he's still out. I'm, I did the mistake again. They're okay. so close. They're both so good. 
Mmm. Alright, I think I made up my mind. I think... I think Gino's wins both. I think Gino's wins both. Um, there's something about the seasoning of the beef that's better on this one. And then the fries at Gino's are also a lot fresher. And they're really good. Plus, I think Pass is actually a little more expensive than Gino's across the street. Um, but they're both they're both really good. So if one line is longer at the other, then just like go across the street and go to the other one with a shorter line. But I think I think I like the Gino's better. So this one's the Pat. What do you think? It's good. It's like an enjoyable experience. But I really think Gino's the bread's a little softer. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. They're both good, that's why it's hard. But let me try this one. Okay. Okay. Cleanse the palate. Hmm. What's this one? It's Is that so one? Good. So good. So you, you are also a Geno's. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, with the Pat's fries. That's my verdict. The Vigino's with Pat's fries? Mm -hmm. I'm a Gino's Gino's. Mm. Well, good thing they're on the same block. <laughs> Alright, so we just finished eating. So Mark is a uh, Gino's cheesesteak with Pat's fries. And I think I am a double Gino's. Uh, I found that part of like my Pat's steak, like I feel like there was more meat on it. But I feel like there were parts of it that were kind of chewy and that didn't have the Pat's. I feel like the Chino steak had a better roll, which was just, it was like a big meat pillow, which was really, really good. And then as far as the fries goes, I just, I, I think I just like plain potatoes better than the, uh, the crunchy coating on the outside. But Mark really like dug that crunchy coating. He was really into it. So there you go. We have settled the issue once and for all. <laughs> and by once and for all, I mean, we'll probably do this again when we come back. <laughs> Both of these cheesesteak places are located in South Philly, which has a really long history of Italian-American communities living here. The neighborhood is now home to many Mexican and Latino people as well. on the sides of buildings. And this is one of them here. Really cool. Super cool. And goes on to the other building over here. Love this one. This is the Suzanne Roberts Theater here. And this is where we're gonna be seeing Found tonight. So it looks really big. I've actually never been here before, but we'll see what it looks like inside later. So Mark and I keep talking about how everything here is just so much smaller than it is in New York. I guess I've just been in New York for so long, but all the buildings here are little and the people here don't walk as fast and, and they're a lot nicer than they are in New York. It's so weird. It's like we're in a city, but it's it feels so much different than being in New York. I can't, I can't exactly put my finger on it. It just does. It's another cool street mural here called the Atlas of Tomorrow. I mostly like it because there's a giant kitty cat on it. If you're ever on South Street in Philly, I highly suggest visiting the Magic Gardens. Um, it's an indoor, outdoor art space featuring mostly mosaics, um, and a lot of them use a lot of found materials, such as old bottles, old plates, stuff like that. It's really, really cool. Okay, so we're taking a break right now. I'm enjoying a nice beer. We're at Brauhaus Schmitz which is a uh, German beer and sausage restaurant that I've been to on South Street before, and it's pretty good. Um, it's actually a really nice looking place. They have like a little balcony up there, I'm sure you could see it. Just doing things like laying low, checking emails, relaxing before we go see the show tonight. Hi, so it's almost 5 p.m. So I'm on my way to dinner. We are going to a pinup theme bar um, near the Washington Square section of uh, Philadelphia. So I just enjoyed a nice beer in South Street. I'm going to take a nice 10-minute walk. So I was concerned that I'd get wings all over my nice white shirt. So I'm wearing a bib like a baby. But these are their duck front wings. They're actually really good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obsessed with